Kia ora tātou kato, Nisa, Bully Fanaka, and Te Lofalava. Uh, welcome to this edition of Playmakers on KT. And every episode each week we catch up with a personality in the rugby circles. And I'm very, very happy to say we have one of the guys who probably has the biggest shoulders and toughest shoulders in New Zealand rugby, former All Black Chris Marso. And my man, great to see you, bro. What's been going on? G'day, my brother. Thanks for having me, bro. I'm looking forward to having a chat with my old mate. Uh, he teach me a couple of those one and then how one, 60, 80, 60, 40. <laughs> Yeah, been good, bro. Um, it's good to be back home, and uh, you know it's been uh, tough overseas, but we're back home now, and uh, you know with family, and uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's been good to be back home. So it's, it's awesome to be able to catch up, especially after a long time of haven't seen you because you've been obviously away in France, and we'll get to that. But um, obviously, uh, we'll take it right back to the start. You were born in Samoa. We actually brought up in Whangarei. I knew you were a good Northland boy. How did that come about? <laughs> Yeah, nah, grew up in Samoa, bro. Came over to Wanganui as a, you know, 17-year-old kid, fresh from the boat. Uh, you know, English was second language and got thrown into Wanganui City College. Yeah. Uh, but it was a challenging, but, you know, uh, look, if I didn't come to Wanganui or New Zealand, I didn't have this chat with you, my man. And I just tell me, um, we first uh, crossed paths in sevens, but how did that whole situation sort of come about, playing, playing sevens? Is that something you always wanted to do? or I mean, because you're pretty awesome at it, I'll be honest with those first trials, but is that something <laughs> that, that, that naturally just you wanted to drift into? Yeah, you know, um, like, you know, yourself, I, you know, my whole family started as a boxing, but couldn't handle the training and stuff, <laughs> and I started, <laughs> started to, to try another sport. And, uh, you know, rugby was something that, you know, back in the island we... We don't have rugby ball or anything. We just use coconut trees or, you know, the sticks. And uh, that's how we fell in love with the game. And, you know, like sevens was something that um, probably gave me the opportunity to to where I am now, to be yeah. honest. Um, uh, something that I always... Uh, Never take it for for granted, man. And uh, you know, it's been uh, it's been awesome. What was it like that first training? How, how did the like the body and the mind react to Titch's training? Because it's brutal, eh? It's brutal, eh, my man. Oh, let's be honest. Uh, my first training, I vomit after school. <laughs> or, I say vomit. <laughs> um, but you know, it was a. I think it comes with the new, you know, the nerves, mm. and you know, seeing you guys, uh, yourself, uh, Rashi, and you know, some guys I always look up to, watching you guys in the IRP circuits and you know to finally rock shoulder with you legend in the game uh, you know um, but let's be honest uh, it was tough training mate um, yeah, yeah. but that's that's what it's all about uh, I, I remember one actual it might have been your first Wellington and we were playing might have been playing Wales I think it was <laughs> in the quarter final I think we ended up beating about 75 or 80 to nil I think you got about 200 turnovers about 25 tries and then we ended up going on to play South Africa, and um, I think Rushy got bought in, and Titch put you on the on the on the on the on the reserves. And I said to Rushy, uh, "Mate, we've yeah. got to get this fella. We've got to get this fella in the starting lineup." And I think Rushy was a bit injured, and uh, he started, yeah. and we ended up losing that quarter uh, that semi final. I thought straight away, for me, early on, I could see the the impact you're going to have on the game. You know, with your physicality, that, that's something that always stood out for me. But that's just the natural way you play, like, like smashing people. Oh, you know, like, like yeah, you know, the good mate on my JC. So you know, it doesn't mean, you know, it's the it doesn't mean the 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 little taxi ran into a bus or a truck. That means the the truck is not even dent too. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's still, you know, like, uh, you know, that's what we call the game. It's a you know physical game, mm. and uh, I love every part of it. And you know, like I say, you know, it's a contact sport, and. Um, I love that part of the game, and uh, yeah, something that I always enjoyed. Uh, you know, when we go on the field with you or any other other boys, man. Oh yeah, I mean, it was something that we obviously um, in, the, in, the, in the game of sevens really, uh, really liked. I mean, your, your mate Rushy, and you spoke about Craig the Goldie and yourself, uh, <laughs> Mitchell Parkinson, I'll chuck in there as well. Yeah. I yeah. mean, um, <laughs> fighting was a legit le actual tactic back in those days, and you, and you spoke about your boxing background. <laughs> I th I'm just glad you guys are on my team, but. Um, just tell me about your first Hong Kong. I mean, I, I always looked up to Hong Kong and going there, but I remember us going over there. We ended up playing Fiji. We had yourself and, um, gee, we had quite a few young bucks at that first Hong Kong. I think we ended up beating Fiji 31-5 to 5 or something, eh? But how was that for you? 
Oh, it was awesome, man. Uh, I don't know if you remember the Fijian uh, team that day. Yeah. <laughs> it was all the, the legend of the game yeah. and superstar. But, yeah, you know, it was um, – and, and that's um, great about rugby, man. Like, you're going to compare yourself to the best and, you know, that, that opportunity game in Hong Kong and um, probably – probably one of the best uh, tournament I play in the seventh circuit. And, uh, you know, as always, remember those days, man, like when you come up against the, the King, Rosario Serie, mm. and Foot and Park, those guys, man, like, you know, it's uh, Billy Satala still breaking my nose on that game. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, you you came up to me going, are you all right, cuz, keep going. Bro. <laughs> well, you had, the pack, you had the pack down against the not me, I was in the backs. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's why you want me to go get going, bro. Go, come on, because it's you, right? You can breathe both in here, but I can't block, stop the bleeding, mate. <laughs> yeah, you, you and Johnny Leo, yeah, you or you, you, you boys, you, you all come up together. But, um, I mean, um, for you, bro, what do you think you got out of that Sevens program? Because I think um, the lessons that I can see that you learnt obviously went pretty well when you went into a pretty stellar career. <laughs> uh, let's be honest, KT. Uh, if, I, if I didn't play Sevens for... Tetch, give me that phone call. I won't be where I am now, I'll be honest. Uh, that taught me a lot. Uh, I think it's more like uh, the physicality and more like mental toughness. Yeah, of training. Hard. You know yourself. Uh, every island kids, Tongan, Samoa, Fiji or Māori, they all got talent. But, mm. you know, it's a matter of fact how, we, how hard we can work to get that talent on the top. But... You know, the seven gave me a lot of opportunity, man, and um, and I really, you know, you know, always, always been a pleasure and it's been an honour to be on that part of that uh, sevens team for New Zealand. Well, we've got an alumni's Facebook page set up, so I'm going to add you to that. So, because um, I said, uh, get the <laughs> fellow who's going to, he, he's, he's earning the euro. The, you know, he's he's, gonna, he's the one who's going to pay for everything. So that's you, my bro. Um, <laughs> We'll move on to the Canes, though. We'll move on to the Canes. After you left the Sevens, you uh, went over to the Canes and, and, and formed a pretty formidable loose, loose, loose trio there, I'll be honest. We, 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 it was nicknamed the Bouncers because it was yourself on the blind. You had uh, Jerry and you had... Uh, oh, you're on the open, sorry. Jerry at six and then Rodney Soyalo at, at the eight. So, I mean, what was it like coming into that environment um, as a young man and then being with those two uh, guys who would have been there thereabouts of the ABs, obviously? Yep. You know, uh, like any other... Island kid, man, like, if you see someone, you always look up to it, you know, uh, Jerry and uh, Rodders, you know, they were pretty much on top of their game when mm. I got called into the Canes and, you know, watching those two guys, man, uh, it gives me the motivation to go harder too and, you know, but what makes us uh, special, we got to know each other pretty well, um, you know, and uh, become really good friends and best mate and, you know, it was... Uh, Pretty much tough to divide us up, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, I learned a lot from those two, and you know, like I said before, man, it's uh, it's been awesome um, ride with those guys. Yeah, I know um, you're very, very close mates with Jerry. Um, what was it that made him sp so special to you, my man? I think he just uh, be himself. Um, you know, you probably know, uh, you know, Jerry has got his own walk, yeah. and that's something I like about him. You know, he's always. Uh, no, you know, he's always straight up. You either like it or you don't like it. And <laughs> I think that's what we got, uh, you know, gone really tight, you know. I grew up, like I said before, I grew up in a boxing family. It's all about talking straight and yep. um, not of that, uh, you know, ticky talk talk or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but, yeah, it, it's, um, you know, it's, uh, but, you know, uh, I remember the first time I met JC was... Uh, you know, trials for the, you know, central region and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I came from Monganui, like you say, it doesn't matter where you go, as long as you put in the work. And um, I remember it was, everyone was talking. At the time, I think JC was captain the under-19 for New Zealand. Um, everyone was going, oh, this is Jerry Collin. I was like, who the hell? You know, the kid's fresh from the island. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. And, uh, yeah, we ran into each other and... Uh, yeah, I'll stop at the top, uh, stand on the top of him while he's lying down. I said, like, he's good look tall now, bro. And he looked at me, I'm going to get you. He said, okay, I'll be waiting. And that's how we become real good friends, you know, yeah. we run into each other. Yeah, so that yeah. mutual respect, though? Eh? It is, it is. And uh, I think, um, you know, any young kids that are listening to this, um, I think sports, doesn't matter, any compact sports, all about respect. You know, if you... 
if you respect your your opponents, you're gonna you know you're gonna go a long way too. Now I'll just move on a little bit to your, to your All Blacks debut in in 05. <laughs> I mean, um, obviously coming from like I say from from Samoa and then getting to the pinnacle um, for you in terms of making the All Blacks. I mean, that must have been mind blowing, bro. It is. Uh... It's the only other kid's dream, man, to wear that black jersey. Uh, it was for me, it was uh, an honour, uh, not to me and my whole family, you know, to wear that black jersey. Um, it was a huge achievement, and also like to run out, you know, in my first test in Wales was something special. Um, you know, coming from Savai, yeah, probably only five, six people watching the game, and then <laughs> you run out. <laughs> Uh, 80,000 or 86,000 people, um, you know, it's something always special, man. Like, you got, you're got, always going to care your kids and your grandkids mm. and, you know, your family about it. I remember, because if people don't know, uh, Chris's elder brother is one of the best boxers ever be graced in New Zealand and so more. And um, I remember we went to the Manchester Games in 2002, the Commonwealth Games, and we, you remember we went to uh, Manchester United's training training facilities and uh, they had the head trainer there and he said, oh, I'll get some of you mugs on the, bo- on the, on the gloves, on the pads. So I remember you jumped up, like all the boys, like holy smokes, we heard about it. He actually smoked him. Even the guy was uh, the trainer was freaking out. Do you remember that? Yep, yeah, I do. Far, well, right? you know, yeah, um, probably that's when you know when he's like, oh, okay, any of you guys done this before? I was like, oh yep, yeah, this is my opportunity, bro. <laughs> but um, yeah, well, it's good fun, and you know, bringing back memories, and probably that's one of the best. Best uh, tournament I involved in sevens was uh, Manchester. You know, um, it's uh, it's been an amazing experience, man. Hey, who was your roomie? I had Brad Fleming. He was terrible. Uh, who did you have? Do you remember? Uh, I always remember Johnny. Oh yeah, did yeah. You? it was all down Johnny Leo. Oh jeez. A uh, couple couple of times because uh, I got put over with uh, Rushy. Yeah. And I remember I went to see uh, Wardy. I say, like, bro, um, I can't remember the captain, man, and you know, like. <laughs> I couldn't do anything because, you know, you look at Rushes like God of the Sevens and you're like, lying next to him and you're looking at him and say, what is he doing? What is he doing? Like, he's like, and then I remember I went to Wardy, I was like, bro, uh, is there any chance bro I can get with someone? I actually asked for you too. It seems like, oh, KT seems like a good guy, you know? But, um, yeah, but, you know, Rush, if you hear me, but, you know, it's all about half the game, you know. Well, that's the thing with Rush, yeah, when he talks, you actually listen. I don't know why, because he has to put his teeth in after time. All he does is eat lollies, too, in the room, eh? All lollies and chippies, and we're, we're too scared to eat them. Well, we don't get any lollies, because he's the captain, and he's, the, he's like, <laughs> OK, I'll get lollies first. So, uh, OK, sweet, then. <laughs> all yours. But, you know, uh, something I always remember, Rush, I, I don't know if you remember uh, when uh, Cardiff... And we we had a good tournament. We was, I think we like you know smashing um, Australian and Fiji yes. in the final. And yes. I remember putting my hand up before I put the try down. And I remember Rushy was a uh, water boy. I think Rushy got and then, and then I went, come give me the water. I go don't ever ever put your hand up. And that was the first time and the last time I put my hand out. Try. I remember that. I absolutely remember. That was a good try, though. I remember that was the full length of the try. I oh, remember mate, that. I, I, I had to, I, I had to celebrate because I was like. I was like, man, I ran like 45 metres. Yes. I was like, yes. but I went up like this, and then I remember Rushy just gave me a lot of boy. Don't ever, ever do that again. <laughs> I was like, okay, sorry, my bad. Yeah. Don't but worry. you know, you got to learn something, you know. That's it. That's it. I did it. He didn't say it to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she was good. Hey, I that's... might have to hit him up for that. <laughs> hey, I just want to take you back to 05. And a lot of people talk about it as, as, as the Welsh singing the anthem and saying it's quite quite out of it and emotional. How was it for you lining up and hearing the, the Welsh sing their uh, national anthem? Yeah, I, was, I think the whole week, um, you know, when the after training on Tuesday and I just sneak past, um, you know, the conference room when they're naming the team and then I hear Ted was saying my name, I started at seven. I was like, holy <laughs> moly. And I was, you know... You know, putting my shoes on Richie's is, uh, you know, it's a lot to feel. And yeah. I was like, oh, here we go. And the whole week, man, like, I was really amped up for it. And I think what got me through that, I was like, you know, just trying to shut, you know, listen to music and, you know, just uh, have a chat to JC because that was my roommate at the time. Yes. And, you know, just he's been there before he's done it. But, yeah, for me, if I didn't. Like I just focused on my own game that day, my first um, testing. 
just trying to block out that voice, you know, because in Wales, you know yourself, it's not yeah. an easy place to play. <laughs> and did, did the game go as quick as people say, like on their debut? Did it just go like that, or? Yeah, it was, eh? Um, you know, like the first kick off, and uh, I was through Remo, and I was like, we're in sevens, and, you know, in the back of my mind, you know, we got some legend in the game of seven, you know, Richie, Tross, Grunfeld, all those guys, you know, come through, and I was like, the belly, they're the first one in the ruck. I was like, oh, here you go. <laughs> 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 you know, I wasn't in the field to, to just clean out rucks, you know, I was built to run the ball too, you know, yeah. but um, it was come with that, and then, like, you know, I was really enjoy it. Uh, you know, having uh, play with Jerry and Rod as my first test because yeah. I used to those guys. I reckon um, those two helped me too. And um, man, I, I let's be honest, right after the game, I didn't even make it out to boys having a couple of drinks. I because it was that tired yeah. and I couldn't feel the legs. I went straight to bed. <laughs> you spoke about uh, the influence that Jerry Collins had on you, and Rodney Soriolo. What about Richie McCaw? Oh man, it was huge. Um, you know. Um, that week, the the first, uh, you know, when I got named, starting at seven, uh, was, you know, I was actually Romy with Richie. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, for me, it was honour and a pleasure. And, uh, man, he was helpful, man. Like, little things, you know, running line. And mm. he was, he was, man. And through my whole career of, uh, with the All Blacks, he was, uh, he was a good man. He, he gave me a lot of tips and, uh, you know, Got me where I am now, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. And, and and you went to the 07 Rugby World Cup. I know, obviously, not the result we wanted, but, I mean, going to a World Cup, still got to be massive, though. Uh, well, how, 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 yeah. how is that for you? Oh, man, it's uh, actual special, to be honest. Yeah. You know, probably special and then play your first test. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got um, how many people put up their hands for selection in the All Blacks and for the Rugby World Cup. And I was uh, fortunately, I was lucky enough to make that and, you know, never take it for granted, man. Mm. Uh, it wasn't good here for us, you know, um, but I think, you know, we, like everyone say, you know, Mike Tyson say, everyone's got plans until you get punched in the face. But uh, <laughs> I think we learn from that and, and look at where the All Blacks now, yep. you know, you, you always got to have a learning experience, you know, you got to, you always got to have, you know, make mistakes to learn from it. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it was difficult here, but, you know, like I say, it was, uh, it was been on and a pleasure to be part of it. You stuck out muscles that, that tournament because you decided to go to France after that. You're only 28 years of age. I was broken. <laughs> I said, what are you doing, Mus? But, I mean, <laughs> obviously, obviously, was that just for you? You felt it was time to go experience something new? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you know uh, everyone was... Uh, that's the question that they still ask me now after being 11 years in France. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's um, it's the decision wasn't easy. Uh, make it through with my, you know, family mm. and... Um, but, you know, uh, for me, I uh, think was the, you know, it's the right time, you know, yep. yeah, some other uh, 21 or 19 year old kids coming through and, you know, um, but, you know, it's, uh, that's the beauty of rugby, man. Yep. If you, yep. you know, if, uh, if another door closed, there's always the other doors open up. Um, but, yeah, what's um, what's tough decision, but, you know, I, I enjoy every um, minute, every second of that decision. I was going to say, yeah, like you said, 11 years over in France. I, I love France. I reckon that's the only place other than New Zealand I can live. But for you, what was it about France that you love? I think the uh, the, the culture, eh? Yeah. Uh, it's, different. it's different to New Zealand. Um, you know, uh, I think the, the food and the people. Like, you can find some nice people, you know. Uh, unfortunately, I uh, met some, a lot of good people over there, make some friends, make some enemies. But, you know... <laughs> uh, <laughs> part of the field, eh, bro? That's part of the game, yeah. Hard out. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the game, man. Uh, but I was fortunately lucky enough to meet some, uh, big, you know, good people in France, and you know, and I think the toughest thing in what people that come over is trying to learn the language. And mm. unfortunately, me and my wife Gemma were, you know, speaking in the language. I probably my French is better than my English, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's it, it just um, amazing people, eh? Yeah. Like, you know, it's a lot of, but I, I love France. I fell in love with France when we toured 2006 with the All Blacks. And then yeah. after 2007, I was like, man, I want to try this country out, man. It yeah. seems amazing. Um, yeah, it's it's good um, lifestyle too, you know. Mm. Uh, people just feel and, uh, you know how you say the island time, bro? Yeah. It's definitely. France, bro. <laughs> the French time as well, eh? <laughs> yeah, that's why. Hey, hey. That's why I enjoy it too.
Oh, yeah, yeah. they're like, uh, what, what can we get this year? The whole answer was like, what time are we doing this year? Mm. <laughs> laid back yeah. as, eh? Yeah, it's laid back. But, I mean, you, uh, you're, you're, you mean, you're successful in New Zealand, but obviously very successful over there. I mean, a Heineken Cup in the top 14 final. <laughs> I mean, so you didn't do too bad over there, too. Yeah, I always, like, you know, when I was in New Zealand, uh, I always watched the Heineken Cup. Mm. Um, and in the back of my mind, I was like, man, I want to play that competition. Because, yeah. you know, it's close to, like, a Six Nations yeah. and you know, uh, France, Italy, you know, Wales, Scotland. Um it was always back in my mind. Maybe that's why I beat France too, you know. Um, but yeah, it's been, uh, I was fortunately lucky enough to win my Heineken in the top 14. And, you know, it's been like, it's that different atmosphere over there and then here, to be honest. Uh, you'll probably experience yeah. yourself, you know. And, and you've seen sort of stepped in the natural progression in the next part of your life where well, you got into coaching now. How, how, how's that yep. been for you? Were you at Russing? Was well, that where you were coaching? Yep. I was at R Russing for three years. Mm. Uh, doing a system of defense that's something i always love yes <laughs> yes uh, that's my focus um you know um it's been awesome and then uh doing some um consulting in Kakasan, the second division where um christian lapit i'm sure you know he used to play for france at number eight die here play for toulouse yeah uh, he was also uh, he rang me see if i can come and help his uh, defense and his breakdown and before the lockdown, I say to him in the prison, and I've got to go back home, take mm. the family. It's, and yeah, it's um, it's been awesome, man. Like like I say to you before, as soon as I've been in France, I've become involved more in the game plan, and you know, I want to I want to give back to the to the to the community and to the rugby that give me a lot. You know, um, yeah, I, I really enjoy it, but it's not as easy, bro. It's, it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty tough uh, analyzing games, and I was lucky enough to go to Japan. Caught up with uh, Wayne Smith for for a week. Uh, really enjoyed my time there, and, and you know, in New Zealand, uh, been, uh, trying to sneak in all the Super Rugby and trying to learn as much as I can. And you know, they, you know, because in France and New Zealand are different sort of style of play. Yeah. Uh, and I was lucky enough to experience both of them. Are, are you back in New Zealand for good, or are you going to maybe go back to France, or what, what's the what, what's your plan? Uh, the plan is uh, is always in France, yep. um, you know, you know, opportunity over there. Be given, but you know, with this pandemic, you know, like it's been a it's been a terrible, and uh, decided to bring the family home. Uh, like I say, if it's a good opportunity coming France, uh, men in New Zealand, I will take it. Otherwise, you know, the they always go back to France. But you know, with uh, money situations uh, for me, uh, it's not about money. Mm. It's about mm. what you. Uh, I always a good saying that if you chase the money, the money will run away from you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if you do something that you love, um, uh, but you know, if it's opportunity come in New Zealand, I will take it. But you know, uh, we'll wait and see. Uh, if you're available but, coaching, North Harbour, North Harbour, please ring this young man up. He's available. I'm going to get your coaching job. Don't worry about that. Okay. Well, let, let me tell you something. I'll bring the system defence that been doing in Europe. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm helping out with um, Mount Albert Grandma first of Dean, and we need a defensive coach. Yeah. Give Your me a break. Come to, oh, mate, mate. Come to hey, Megs. Guys, I'm here to get my experience across. <laughs> I'll sit down with you, share my notes with you. But the thing is, you've got to translate in English. It's all in French. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got no show because, like, oh, I can't spell. I can't spell. So I've got hey. no show. I, got, I can't spell. I use predictive texting. I'm useless. I can't spell English. Cool. I use that, bro. <laughs> I can spell X and O, so as long as you get some arrows and put them in places, we'll be sweet. Eh? <laughs> oh, no, but it's, it's awesome. I mean, um, that, that's awesome. And it's a good point you make. And, and, and I think we can't sort of go away from the fact, it's like you say, about it's not about the money. You've got to do what you love and things will happen as a consequence. And I think sometimes a lot of kids lose sight of that, you know, in the professional age. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, like, I um, was... You know, when I first arrived in Taranaki in November, I'll bring the family home and, you know, I've got uh, the guy in uh, Kakasan said, bro, are you coming back? And I was like, mate, it's not, you know, it's more worry about the health of my family. And then, but, you know, I always, it's a good opportunity for me to give it back to Taranaki too, or, yeah. or anywhere yeah. in New Zealand. Yeah. You know, like, um, I think, you know, especially Taranaki in New Zealand give me a lot, um, you know, 
I think this is a good opportunity for me to give it back to to the community and to to the rugby. And um, yeah, it's been a it's been an awesome ride, bro. And it's been a long one too, but yep. <laughs> I really enjoy the the coaching side of it. Hey, you know what, bro? We'll end it on that. I mean, you're a great man. It's great that you come back to New Zealand. It's great that you're giving back to the community. Always cool to catch up, my brother. Good to see you, my boy. Uh, the door's always open down here in the necky, bro. All right, I'm coming right you down with all my family. Now, uh, <laughs> let's bring the final, cuz it is. We're coming in fourth. Now, next week, we have another teammate of Chris's on and I's former All Black Rico Gear right here on Playmakers. Fuck.